All right, I wanted to show you guys the two things so far that I do not despise Booleans for. Um, one of them, and this sounds really stupid, is making, if you ever need to like model in a little grate or something like that um, into something, and like it'll be obvious, I guess, once I show you guys what it is, but first we need to set up the grate. Um, so Booleans, by default, are hideous and awful and they put n-gons all over your stuff and they look awful. So if we grab this and we do like a boolean difference, mesh boolean difference, and we just sort of cut a chunk of cube out of this. I mean, for one, it works really nicely if you don't need to smooth your mesh. If you do, it's terrible. I, I do shamelessly use booleans for 3D printing stuff because that doesn't smooth. I just need to make the mesh really dense and then boolean it and then it's do a mesh cleanup on it. Um, so if you ever do need to sort of fix a boolean for 3D printing or whatever stuff, um, open mesh cleanup and then these are the settings that you want to check here. Uh, mostly just faces with more than four sides. Um, do selected objects and clean up matching polygons. And select If you do select, it'll just sort of highlight everything with n-gons in it. Uh, let me turn off soft select. Let me turn off, there we go. Um, so it's highlighted everything that's an n-gon. Um, if you go to cleanup matching polygons, it'll actually go through and add geometry to forcibly tessellate that so it's no longer an n-gon. Um, if you're one of my students, don't do this for your final projects. It's icky and gross and not great. Um, anywho, so that's usually why I don't like booleans. There are a few instances where you can kind of, in my opinion, uh, get away with using them. Um, so one is making sort of weird little grates um, the other is doing molding on floors. Um, so I'm going to translate these, and I just want like a basically grid of these, uh, each moving three units. So what I'm going to do is just go up to Edit, uh, Duplicate Special, pull up the settings for this, and then we want this translated three units on the Y and not to have any rotation because that's super random. Um, and in this case, I'm going to set geometry type. I don't want these to be instances. I just copies are fine, um, and I'm not overly concerned about any of this right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate that and just set this to like 10 and duplicate that 10 more times. So um, now that we have these duplicated, I'm gonna just grab these, group them, duplicate that group and rotate it. I'll do a modify center pivot um, and then hold down J and what am I doing? Did I, I hit I hit the group. Um, I'll hold down J and rotate this 90 degrees. I'm sorry, J snaps to 15 degree increments, which is just convenient. Um, so this is now what we have, this strange looking grid of you know, multiple different cubes, basically. Um, if we smooth them, this is what it looks like. It basically is like a strange toothpick grid. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just grab all of these guys and do a mesh Boolean. Actually, I do wanna duplicate this for the sake of, um, uh, I, have, I have a demo later, but mesh Boolean union, and it should run through and sort of attach all of these together, theoretically. Now, if we smooth this, you'll notice that this is now what we get. This strange little, looks like a cracker kind of thing, uh, but it has like holes in it. And these are, for the most part, fairly smoothed if you needed. So you'll notice that if you go in and you look at this, there's still some pretty obvious um, faceting, even with the smooths in the center of this. And there's two ways around that. Uh, one is to model this properly, which is always the preferred method of doing things. Um, but if you didn't like that, um, so let me, I have two more stupid demos <laughs> involving this ridiculous object. Um, all right, so the first thing that you can do is just smooth the whole object. So select this and do mesh uh, smooth. Now, if we look at the inside of this, uh, you'll see, if I can get close enough, um, you'll see that it, it smooths much better. Um, you don't have that weird fastening. Like I can see that fastening even back here. Um, but there's just more geometry for Maya to work with, um, so it, it is going to smooth nicer. Um, downside of this is that you have all of these little soft edges in here, and maybe you want this to be like a hard grate or something like that. Um, so there's two options to achieve that. Um, one is to... Okay, I'll, I'll duplicate this again. Um, all right, so the first option is to just go in and just select all the faces on the back and just delete all of them. Great. Uh, all of them. All of them. What is happening here? I feel like my clipping plane on my camera has like gone insane, but that was very weird. 
Um, all right, so it's gone back and deleted some stuff that it wasn't supposed to, but we're going to run with it for now. Um, but basically what we have here is like just a flat plane. Um, so if we mesh smooth this, um, then you should be, <laughs> that actually looks pretty cool. Um, you should be good to then just sort of take this and extrude it like you normally would. Um, and, you know, make your nice, uh, you can add in edge loops sort of as you go, right? So like just uh, extrude again, erg, and just make more of those little loops like that. Um, now you should have this weird shape, but it's like a little bit harder and it's not uh, sort of squishy like the original one was. Oh, no, it's still broken. All right, so the other thing you can do that does not involve deleting faces is going through and uh, uh, this is probably going to get kind of messed up because I'm selecting this really weird, but go through and basically select from a side view all the faces. You can see it's like it's done the ones on this on the middle, but it's not done. That's really hard to look at. Sorry. Um, it's not done any of the ones like on the front or side. Then what you can do is extrude all of those. And all you need to do now is just scale them in ever so slightly. And you'll see that it should um, basically add in all of those loops for you at once. And I have something selected that shouldn't be, so it's kind of getting weird. But um, that is pretty much another way to achieve the same effect there. Um, so that is use one for Booleaning. I do want to show you guys what happens if you do this incorrectly. So let's say that these are offset from each other by like, I'll make it negative 0.001 or something like, maybe it's like 0.01. Um, and keep in mind, like, my units are set to millimeters, so this is, like, 0.01 millimeters. Like, this is super tiny. But if we grab all of these and do a mesh Boolean union again, uh, you'll notice the topology doesn't quite look the same. Uh, and if we smooth it, it looks really bad. Um, to be honest, I like the pattern this makes, but this geometry is appalling. Um, so these need to be, like, perfectly aligned with each other if it's off by 0.01 your Boolean's going to get messed up and it's not going to work right. And you need to be really, really careful when doing these Boolean things that you don't translate stuff. And as soon as you do it, check your geometry and make sure it's not blown up. Um, so that's my first bit. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, the second thing I want to show you is pretty much, um, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just, um, you know, a slightly different, I guess, application for your Boolean. So I'm just going to make some really, really crappy chair molding really quick um, and I'm going to do this I think in just the laziest way possible and just add some random subdivisions and be like great look at my beautiful oof <laughs> all right that looks terrible um, I'm always like I'm going to do this really badly and then I'm like no it must be nice looking uh, and I turn into a crazy person all right so here's my really ugly molding it makes no sense but here we go um all right, so you're building, say, a room, whatever, and you come to a corner of the wall. And you're like, uh, do I really need to model in this stupid 90, like 45 degree angle here? Like, that's gonna be a pain. Um, and my answer is no. You can be really lazy and Boolean your stuff together. And if you do it right, if you're paying attention, it won't theoretically blow up your stuff, theoretically. Um, so just grab these, same thing you did before, do mesh, Boolean union. And that's worked not well at all. Okay, so I tried a different uh, method of unioning these together. Um, and I find that classification, or like the normal, tends to work a little bit weird sometimes. Um, where it'll kind of leave, like if we go in here, you can see it's left bits of geometry inside. So that is something that you do need to be aware of when using Booleans, is sometimes it creates broken geometry. Um, but in this case, what we can do is just sort of go through and very easily uh, delete these ends. Die. Why is Maya being insane? Um, and then, I mean, we still have like some pretty pretty crappy geometry on the inside of this, so we just need to go through and uh, remove this manually. Good lord. Um, I'm just going to be really lazy and delete like the entire side. Of Why does this keep popping back up? Okay, clearly there's something very not good happening with my Maya right now, which is uh, kind of concerning. Um, so like I said, sometimes this works and sometimes it uh, doesn't so much. 
This seems to be one of the times where it uh, doesn't so much. Um, all right, so I'm gonna actually just duplicate these and again. Um, so I guess the other thing, so there is, there is one more thing that you can do um, to sort of try and get the same effect if the Booleans are being terrible to you, which is pretty much what's happening in this instance. And that is, and there's a few different ways to do this, um, but basically you wanna make a 45 degree angle and cut it with something else that's not your original shape. So in this case, I'll start with the cylinder take this down, that's not how 45 degrees works, is it? Um, eight subdivs, right? So we have like the 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and then the 45s here. Um, so then I'm just gonna go through and just snap, uh, use vertex snapping to put that on the very corner of my molding like this. Um, I will scale this, uh, it doesn't really matter, I guess, with the scale. Um, but basically I should be able to move this around and. As long as this line is on it, it'll chop a 45 degree angle out of that um, very, very easily. So what you want to do is grab these faces, delete them, and then we have this weird open thing on the back of this. Um, so you do want to close this, otherwise your Boolean won't work. Mesh tools, mesh display, where am I going? Good Lord. Um, edit mesh bridge is what I'm going for there. Um, cool. And then if you just stretch this really huge, uh, what you can do is basically, and this is like, I'm not going to lie, this is not an inherently elegant way to do this. Um, what you can do is uh, mesh boolean difference the 45 degree angle out, and then it'll cut a perfect 45 degree angle in your object. Then you can delete the face from this, and then, and then, if you want to, uh, you can just extrude this out and make sure this is set to something more logical than component, uh, and then scale that flat, and then you have a nice 45 degree angle in your molding, like so. Um, so that's, that's the safer way to do it that doesn't involve booleaning. Um, the other thing that you can do, and for some reason I'm always like cursed with this method, is use the multi-cut tool. Um, so I'm just gonna use Control shift x and if you click anywhere uh, and hold down Shift, You'll notice that it's snapping to, I believe 15 degree increments is what they do. Um, but this looks like about 45 degrees, I think. Um, and you can just slice right through your object with the multi-cut tool. It works pretty much the same way as Booleaning. Um, be aware again that this does not care in the slightest about uh, preserving quads or any other nice topology. Uh, and for some reason, this is turned on that cool. Um, so that does basically the same thing as the Boolean. It's just a different way to accomplish the same thing. Um, the convenient thing about having the topology set up like this is that if you do need to um, harden these edges, you know, you're obviously you like you want this smooth maybe, and you don't want this insane corners. Um, what you have is these very very nice 45 degree angles running pretty much the exact way a cut on actual wood molding would. Um, so it allows you to go in very very easily and add in these loops. And then the other nice thing about this is um, it makes adding wood grain really easy, right? So like this, this would be like a separate piece of wood from this. What you can do is just come in here and cut your UVs right along the seam. And then each piece of your molding is gonna have a separate UVable chunk of, um, of wood grain. So it makes things very, very nice for texturing as far as I'm concerned. But anywho, um, so that was the two times I used Booleaning when one of those times doesn't work with Booleaning. So hopefully that was helpful or something.